Well, hello again, and I just want to take a moment and uh, welcome you to this video. We are um, going through some recalibration as a church. We're going through the relaunch mindset. We're trying to get ourselves on the same page and we're trying to do some things we've never done before. And so part of it is um, unlearning what we have, um, what we've been taught. Maybe, maybe I have taught you or, or you've learned from other folks. And part of it is being, uh, um, refining maybe is a better word refining what we what we do and make it even better i'm trying to show what see which way works better with this i want to make sure i know that doesn't work uh let's do it like that so you kind of see where we are um i'm gonna change it um number one is five purposes why we exist as a church and, and i sent you the scriptures already about we exist as a church based on some scriptures that jesus himself said in their own church uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go into all the world to preach the gospel, um, teaching them to deserve all of commanded. Lo, I'm with you always. Um, uh, Acts chapter two, they devote themselves to the apostles teaching, breaking of bread, fellowship and prayers, and no one had a need. So there, there's so many, those, those scriptures, so many things in the word. I think those are some basic, strong purposes of what the early church did and what they were about and what we need to be about even now. Let me tell you, all five of these are vital and important. Now, some churches emphasize one over the other. Matter of fact, let me just throw this out there and it's not even in my written down notes, but there's some churches that it's all about worship. It's all about the worship experience. You go in and they'll worship for an hour and a half and and it's all about the music and it's all about people experiencing God and Mel, and it's beautiful. And uh, some churches that their emphasis is that, and the pastor, his role is to be the worship leader. His role is to lead people in worship. And it's really, honestly, I'd like to, that's kind of what I like to do. Honestly, I like to lead people in the presence and help me move people in the presence as a lead pastor. I think it's important to do. And there's some churches that's what they specialize in. Other churches, they specialize in fellowship. And, and uh, fellowship is almost as if it's all about us coming together and enjoying each other's company. And uh, to the point that the, the, the leader becomes the, the, like the head, uh, like grandpa, right? basically. He's the head dad of everything. I used to call those family reunion churches. As a matter of fact, I, I'll go up and tell you about the worship church. The worship church is incredibly uh, musically and inspiring, and it's a worship church is usually uh, very much, uh, you sense, the, sense a lot of good things as you leave there. Uh, probably not the deepest church in the world. Not all, I'm not saying always, but sometimes they're not the deepest church in the world when it comes to the word of God. And uh, it can be too experience-based if you're not careful. It's just about what God told you in a dream the other night after having pizza, you know, wherever, more so than, um, than necessarily what the word says. And so, Sometimes you got to watch that uh, family reunion church or a fellowship church. Church is just as fellowship. And that's their emphasis is great because you feel real warm and comfortable in that church. You feel like family as long as you're a part of the family. And if you're part of the family, you feel comfortable. If you don't feel part of the family, you feel like an outsider and you always will be an outsider. I was raised in a church that was kind of a family church and uh, it was it was a good place to be. And it's changed over years. But it was if you're part of the family or part of the quote unquote church family, then then you're going to be accepted. But if you're not part of a church family, then then uh, you looked at as an outsider. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine just um, just the other day about he's, he's at a church and he's pastoring this church and he's trying to move the church forward into what God has for it. And and he's running into, you know, we this is basically this is our church. We don't do it this way. I know you got new people coming in, but they still don't fit in with us. That kind of thing. It's hard, man. It's hard. So, if, but but you, if you're part of a family reunion church or, or a fellowship church, it's all about fellowship. Then you really feel warm and connected and loved, and that's a great part about it. Uh, thirdly, there's the discipleship church where it's all about everything in the church has moved from what discipleship discipleship to basically everything's teaching. Everything's teaching, 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 and. Um, these are good churches. The pastor becomes the lead professor and uh, and it's all about teaching. And that's a, it's wonderful. And, and you get teaching in the small groups and the teaching and whatever. And, and everything can be very, very strong. I think fundamentally that's a strong place to be. Um, and uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share positives about all these. I've already said some negatives, but I'm going to say some positives. I told you about the worship church. There's a great opportunity to just sense the presence of the Lord and encouragement of the fellowship church. You feel warm and invited and 
cared for, um, a church that's emphasizing just discipleship. You you know you're learning the word, man. You you can quote scripture. And you just kind of excited. Your kids are learning the word, and it's just man, it's just such a wordy. It's so word, so much word, and, and and you're growing in that, and it's a good thing. Now the drawbacks of that is the extreme of that is the other end is because is the it could be dead. Um, you know, dead on arrival, dead. Because the Bible says what? The letter killeth. The letter killeth. The spirit gives life. I mean, there's nothing to, that, look, there's nothing I love better than the word. And I'm, I'm you know, I mark it up. I'm praying over it. Uh, I'm praying through it. I'm memorizing like some of you have or are doing right now in the, our Psalm 27 prayer. Um, but, uh, but, but the word, the word is life giving. And so we believe, yeah, we believe in the word. We believe that and some churches, that's what the emphasis is, is that you know, the discipleship end of other churches are all about the, the ministry in, and their, their thing is we want everybody serving. Uh, we believe everybody should, should find a place to serve in the church and in the community and serve, 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 and, uh, develop their gifts, deploy those gifts, use those gifts. Serve, serve, serve. And I think that's a very powerful way to do ministry too. I think that the pastor is the the lead uh, the, the lead uh, minister, meaning he's he's out there encouraging people to go serve in these communities, go serve in this area of ministry. And he's the chief communicator when it comes to that. Uh, and I think it's I think it's powerful. Now, uh, the, the drawback of a church that just does that is that it could easily some people easily get burnt out. They get burned out if, if, if it's a doing church, because I, I would call that a doing church, doing, 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 you get burned out. Sometimes people just kind of get off on tangents and do some take the ball on the court and, and run with things that maybe not necessarily biblical. But I do think that it's a, a ministry church is a, is a great, uh, a great uh, church that serves incredibly well and does ministry and releases people to ministry. Uh, but again, burnout can happen easily. And the fifth is the uh, evangelism church, We're reaching out by declaring the gospel. That reach out to an evangelism church is all about, every Sunday is about people, it's a salvation message. Every Sunday is about giving people an opportunity to get saved. Every Sunday it's, and that's, uh, and that's the emphasis. Not emphasize the worship, you know, not emphasizing necessarily the discipleship part of it or the ministry part of it, or even the fellowship part of it. We just want people to get saved, 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 saved. And the strength of that is it, it binds us to something that's eternal. It binds us to lost people coming to know Jesus. The drawback of that is it, it, it's like the church that, let me put it this way. It's like the church that said their vision was a church for hurting people. Right. And that sounds really good. That was their vision statement. We're a church for hurting people. Um, and that's great because it's that sounds very evangelistic, very let's reach people. Uh, and one of the guys was, was said before, he said, look, the problem is a church for hurting people is great. But what happens when the hurting people get better? What happens when the lost people get saved? Right. The lost people, the people who were hurting that get healed don't want to be around more hurting people all the time. They want to grow. And so that church really, instead of, uh, and which is really where I got part of my slogan uh, for this uh, whole thing you may have already seen already. He, he said, a church vision should not be just a church hurting people. It should be a church of health and healing. And that was, I thought was pretty smart, a church of health and healing. And I think that is, um, that is what happens. So the drawback is there's no spiritual growth. There's no development. It's just, let's get people saved. Let's go knock on doors. Let's do whatever. Here's the thing for me. Here's the thing for me. As I'm saying all these to you, every one of those excite me. There's more to excite me than others, to be honest with you. But every one of those things excite me as I'm sharing that with you. I love worship and fellowship. I love uh, discipleship. I think ministry is incredible. I think evangelism is important. And as a church, person, as a church, uh, if you were to ask me, what would be, what would I want to see uh, more of? I'd say, yes, all of it. See more, all of it, all of it. Um, I, I do, I do as a pastor, but as a preacher, I'll tell you that I, I want to see altars filled with people coming to Jesus. Um, as a preacher, as a pastor, I do want to see people deploying their gifts as a pastor to do work in ministry. Um, as a pastor, I do want to see people worshiping, experience the presence of God. If I can, if we can, as a church, make that con that uh, 
that point where people are connecting with God. I think that's huge. As a pastor, I do want to see people grow in the word. And I do want to see people connect. I do believe, as I said in another video, I think every every woman, every man, every boy, every girl, every teenager should have a connecting point in the church where there's fellowship. It's like Lego pieces. They should connect somewhere. And so what uh, what that means to me is that means that as as we walk, listen, as we walk through this, um, they, each one of these are going to be so important. And there's some personally I'm going to want to see more than others. But I dream of a church where, People uh, who are fam families who are looking for a church find a church, and their 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 wives and their husbands are connecting with get with other men. Their teenagers are connecting in the, in the ministry in, in the church, and they're finding a place to serve in the ministry. And they serve in the church, and they and they experience God in the worship. I, I, I'm loving to see that people that are looking for a church that live in our community, people looking for a church who who just move in our community. They come into worship's rich. And they experience God in the worship. They they are fellow. They begin to connect, meet other men and ladies and teenagers and and families that they connect with. And they begin to say, "Look, where can we serve?" Well, that's ideal. And and how and then these people bring folks to an altar or bring people to church or away from God, and help us lead people to an experience with Jesus Christ. And then help we help them all disciple. These new believers. I mean, these these are things that you dream of as, as a pastor. And here's what I found. I find that, um, you know, if you aim for nothing, you'll get it every time. And so that's what we want to see. And see what what I dream of is for your ministry to have all five of these in your ministry. Now, let me just say this, because you personally, as a leader, may have a bent towards one or the other. I know I've bent towards some. Um, and I'll share maybe a little bit more of that. Um, but. But when it, at the end of the day, you probably you need not probably you need to find your five those five things and your ministry plans and goals and strategies need to balance all five of those. All five of those need to be a part of your visions, goals, plans. Excuse me, not visual, but uh, goals and strategies for the next year should include all five of these. So if you have eight things that are fellowship and one thing is discipleship and one thing that's a worship experience, and you're out of balance. What you need to do is say, OK, these are five purposes. These are five things. These are, we already heard our values. These are purposes. What avenue in the next year? What two times can I give opportunity for kids to practice evangelism? What two times can I give families opportunity to have fellowship with one another? What two times can I give a discipleship opportunity for moms and dads? What two times can I uh, encourage a worship experience? What two times can I find them engaged in ministry? Those things are important to the whole process of what um, we're we're doing. And so hang on just one second. Let me, let me do this because this is unusual. Um, sorry about that. But what two things are we... Um, so, so you, you plan that way. So you plan that way. So, so your values are, okay, in the next year, I am, um, excuse me, your, your purposes. In next year, I'm planning for, uh, let's just say that I'm the pastor. I'm planning for the church for the next year. What, what, what am I going to be? What events am I going to plan as the pastor for the church next year? Well, let's do a couple. Let's say, okay, look, we need a couple worship nights. So during the next year, we're going to not only have worship every Sunday, but we'll have a couple nights of, of worship. And they're not just going to be free fall. We're going to be just encounter with God type worship nights. And I need to figure out how I can make that happen and how to help our worship team put it to a level that people want to be a part of. Um, in the next year, what two fellowship events am I going to do? Am I going to do a uh, dinner on the grounds? Am I going to bring a caterer in? Am I going to do food trucks? Uh, am I going to have a volleyball set up or adult dodgeball? Um, am, am I going to have a football, flag football thing set up? Whatever these things are, uh, well, these opportunities, you know, those kind of things, I've got to figure out, okay, how can I get a, a fellowship where people begin to do some activity together, but then feel connected? Um, what activities am I going to do for discipleship? Am I going to do this, this discipleship revival? My friends might have done that. They do a discipleship revival instead of having a three or four night um, revival service of a three or four night or afternoon or morning um, evangelists come in that does discipleship. How to read the Bible, how to study the word, how to grow. Uh, what can I do in the next couple, uh, next two year to say uh, we're going to have an emphasis on discipleship during some of our small groups. Our small groups all be about 
uh, discipleship or how do I make plans to help our folks get in groups of two or three that they're not, they have a, a life where they have a, a Paul in their life, a Timothy in their life, and uh, they have a Barnabas in their life, which means basically have somebody who is uh, above you speaking into your life, somebody who's your peer, who's living life with you, and somebody who's younger than you or spiritually younger than you that you're trying to bring up and grow. Plan that. How do you plan that? Th fourthly, uh, ministry. Uh, give me a couple of days where I can serve both in the church and in the community. Give me a couple of big events. We're supposed to do serve sa uh, Saturday in July. And so who knows what gonna, that's going to look like. But uh, the idea is, look, we want to give an opportunity to serve in generosity, our community, serve in our gifting, serve in the church. And I would say outside the church, but in the church, find a place to serve. Maybe it's a work day. Maybe it's a, a training day for everybody who's in ministry, a one day training for everybody on what, how to do ministry, what to do in ministry in the church. Maybe it's an actively serving day, whatever. Like I said, and as a pastor, what two events will I do to help us in evangelism? Will I do an evangelistic outreach? Will I make two big days, uh, an emphasis on bringing people? Will I deploy people and one day deploy people throughout? I said, I think in my notes, I said that we need 30 preachers. What if one day, instead of doing a serve Saturday, would we do a gospel Saturday or a gospel Friday? Where in one day we we set up all over a community and we find places to preach and share Jesus and knock on doors and and we can adopt a block which is good but we we'll preach with it you know um, all those things so I, I think all of those plans can like so so your planning and my planning and the planning in your area needs to include all five of these with a balance to it now my heart is uh, bent towards I want the worship experience. I'll tell you what I like to see. I like to see the work people get connected with God in the worship experience. I like the worship be powerful. I mean, hot and ready. God's moving. People are encountering God. Tears are flowing down people's eyes. People are just getting, just worshiping. People are encountering the Lord. That's what I love to see. I like that. I love preaching. And I love to see people. I love preaching to encourage people. And I love to see people come to know Jesus Christ. That's, that's really my heart. That's really what I want to see happen when it comes to my own preference, what I like, what I like and I enjoy. I want worship and preaching. I want worship to happen. It's powerful, dynamic, and people encounter God. You don't take any Sunday off. It's a powerful time. And preaching where people come to respond to the gospel and they give their life to Jesus. And they are encouraged even. Believers are encouraged in the word. And that's what I like personally to do. What I like to see is I love seeing ministry. I love people serving in their gifts. I love seeing people serving in their gifts and serving in as the priesthood of all believers, serving in every way they can. I love seeing people being used of God and uh, just willingly being used of God. And I love, I love seeing that. And of course, in, involved in those things, of course, it, that's just my preference. But I do know we need folks have to be discipled. Those who get saved have to be discipled. And we need to walk people through discipleship. And we know people that are a part of church need to feel like they belong. They're connected. There's a connecting point. So those are those are areas. You in your area, you may say, I love, I just love that one-on-one -on -one time with people. And that's my heart. That's my heart. And that may be your heart. But you know, when you lead, you've got to be able to say, okay, what I've got to take things that aren't necessarily the easiest thing for me, but I know the purpose of the church is more than just my one-on-one -on -one time. Your heart may be, I just like to worship. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is worship. And that's great. You can have that. You're like me. I like to, I like to preach. But then you've got to stop and say, wait a minute. My team may also need, they're going to need more than that. We need to lead our ministry team to be worship and discipleship and fellowship and helping reach people and developing their gifts, you know, all those things. Uh, and, and it's the same with all of it. It's the same with whatever area you're in. You may love discipleship. I just like to get in the book, get in the word. And I just want to disciple, disciple, disciple. And then that's great. But then you've got the whole thing laid out where you, you've got, okay, I've got to find connected points with these people. I've got to help our folks in their worship experience. I, we've got to find avenues where we're reaching people. How do we reach people? All these things are going to be, part of it. it's normal it's normal to have your own bent it's normal to have your own desires and want to move but truthfully it's just like the worship just like in worship if we love worship but we don't help people develop the ministry gifts then we'll we'll find a time where where we run out because we we've you we've done everything we know to do we've we've not developed anybody we've not seen their gifts develop and so when we're done or when we're tired or we're sick there's nobody stepping up because we're not developed anybody 
right? Or if we are leading a, a student ministry and, and we want, it's just an example. So don't, it's just an example. We're leading student ministry and, um, and, and we're not seeing, uh, again, the development of people through the ministry gifts or we're not seeing the one-on-one time where people are getting connected and having this sense of, of fellowship, you know, and, and excuse me, we're seeing that happen. There's real fellowship happening. And then new kids come or we people see around us things not people not getting kids just wandering off and lives talking about spiritually lives are not being touched people are not being saved things are, look that's just part of that's part of it so we've got to do whatever let me just say one more thing and this is the last part of this i think personally and i don't know how to say it other than um just say it i i think as we move in these things i think uh, our empowerment by the spirit. I think Pentecostal experience, the experience of speaking in other tongues or prophetic experiences, all those things. I think that is a part of the discipleship process. Now that's my, so, so what I would say is if I'm going to have a discipleship um, revival as a pastor, then I'm probably going to have a discipleship word uh, and six months later at, at an encounter weekend where people get can get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because I think that is part of the discipleship process. Now, that's just my opinion. Uh, that's what I think uh, is biblical. Jesus did tell the disciples to wait on the power of the Spirit. So that's, that's what I feel. And so all of these, so you may say my discipleship process, what time am I giving for the Holy Spirit to baptize folks? So I may have to have a, a women's encounter weekend. I may have to have a young person encounter weekend. Many of us in, in the past, this year is kind of is an exception, but in the past, many of us would have camps, which would become that for us. We'd go to youth camp or kids camp and kids would have an encounter with God. Uh, and then we would we want to maximize that up to date, let them have an up to date experience with God. So I want you to hear my heart. I want you to hear where I'm coming from when it comes to worship, evangelism, fellowship, discipleship, ministry. All of these areas are vital to what we do. They're the purpose of what we do. And uh, in all of that, we want you to make sure these purposes are strategically planned inside of your goals and um, desires for the next year. So strategically, you're going to plan these things and they'll be a part of it. All right. So watch. thank you for watching this video. Like I said in the other video, you can put this on 1.25 or one. Have you speed up the YouTube a little bit if you don't want to hear me ramble as much. But I will say these are important. And uh, every time uh, in the next few weeks, as in the next week or two, next few weeks, as you turn in your plans and your strategy and goals, you're going to be asked, what events are this or worship? What events are discipleship? What events are fellowship? What events? And there needs to be a balance in those. There needs to be a balance in those. So keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Thank you so much.